Hello physical scientists and math learners, I'm Miss Martins and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a lesson. Tell me what topic you would like to see next. Enjoy the lesson. Hello grade 11s, today we're going to go over some chemistry exam questions and in particular we'll be looking at intermolecular forces, physical properties. Let's go. Now the first thing that I want to point out is that in every chemistry and every physics exam you will be asked definitions and in 8.1 you can see on the screen behind me that they ask you to define boiling point. Now certain definitions are in the matric exam guidelines and so you need to know those word for word. When you give a definition if it's missing some key points some very important words or key phrases then they will subtract marks. And this definition, the definition of boiling point, is one of those. It's a very important definition, so let's go over it. Right, there's the definition, and I just want you to take note that if, for example, you forgot to say the temperature at which, because the definition is boiling point, students often like to say the point at which. It's a temperature. We know the boiling point of water, for example, is around 100 degrees Celsius. It's a temperature at which a liquid's vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. You must say those key phrases when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. If you don't say those things, you will lose your marks. Okay, let's take a look at the table in 8.2. When you're given a table, it's very important to look at the headings of the table, the column headings, and the data given. So this says boiling points of the first four hydrides. So now a hydride is when something is bonded with hydrogen. So here we can see this is hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen iodide. So they're all bonded with hydrogen and the boiling points. The first question says describe the trend in boiling points. When they say the trend, they want to know if as you go from HCl to HI, is the boiling, are the boiling points increasing or they're decreasing, those sorts of things. So remember in physics and in chemistry, we speak a lot about trends and also relationships like directly proportional, inversely proportional and those things. So in this case, the trend in boiling points would be that as you move from HCl to HI, the boiling points increase. Okay, you see how I hesitated there for a second because of the negative numbers. So this HCl, is has a more negative boiling point than HI. I hope you can see that. So it's getting more negative, therefore the boiling point is increasing. So there's the trend over there. The boiling point increases as you go from HCl to HI. Explain the trend identified in question 8.2.1. So they're basically asking me why. Why are we seeing an increase in boiling point as we move to HI? Or why does HI have a greater boiling point than HCl? Now, the first thing that I thought of was, let's think about the intermolecular forces that would exist between molecules of HCl and molecules of hydrogen iodide. And if you look at the difference in electronegativity for HCl and the difference in electronegativity for hydrogen iodide, you see that they're both polar covalent molecules. In addition, neither of them would have hydrogen bonding between their molecules because remember hydrogen bonding is when we have the hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen a oxygen or a fluorine so i call it h noth okay just help me remember this is a hydrogen and a chlorine this is a hydrogen and an iodine so it's not going to have neither of these molecules will have um, or substances will have hydrogen bonding between their molecules so because they're both polar covalent they will be dipoles Okay, dipole, 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 just plain old dipole, dipole. But then, why, if we look at the table, why does hydrogen iodide have a much higher boiling point than HCl? Well, if you look at our periodic, periodic table again, we can see that chlorine, the atomic mass or relative atomic mass number of chlorine is 35,5. And if we look at iodine, it's much bigger, 127. So what that means is if I had to work out the molar mass or the molecular mass of HCl versus that of hydrogen iodide, I would see that hydrogen iodide has a much larger molecular mass. And the larger the molecular mass means that there will be more intermolecular forces between those particles. So basically what I'm trying to say is if I have a sample of hydrogen chloride, remember, each little hydrogen chloride molecule is attracted to another by these intermolecular forces. 
if I compare that to another sample of hydrogen iodide, again, there's that dipole-dipole forces that are attracting the molecules to one another. But because hydrogen iodide has a much larger molecular mass, there will be more London forces because they're bigger. It's a bigger molecule. Bigger molecular mass, bigger molecule, therefore more of these intermolecular forces. Therefore, overall, there will be stronger intermolecular forces between the molecules of hydrogen iodide. And you should remember that the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point, because it's going to need or it's going to take more energy to overcome these forces, to overcome or weaken these forces. So how do I write that in an answer? Okay, so I know my answer looks very long, but you do need to get used to writing slightly longer answers for this section. So if you want the marks, you have to make sure all the correct points are there. Now, the most important thing for you to say is that HI or hydrogen iodide has a larger molecular mass. That'll get you your first mark. But sometimes in matric, they award the mark if and only if you state the intermolecular forces present in both. So I always start off by stating the intermolecular forces present between the molecules of both. So you could say molecules of HI and molecules of HCl both have dipole-dipole forces and London forces between their molecules. In this particular test, they didn't award a mark for that. But like I said, in matric, if this question is worth four or five marks, then they do require you to first state the intermolecular forces. And then say, even though they have the same intermolecular forces, HI has a larger molecular mass. Because of that, it has stronger intermolecular forces. So that's your second mark. And because it has stronger intermolecular forces, more energy is needed to weaken or overcome these forces. And then this last point you don't have to repeat because you already mentioned this last point in 8.2.1, the fact that HI has a higher boiling point. You mentioned that in 8.2.1. Remember you said that the boiling points increase. So it's basically those three um, ticks over there. But as I said, the first bullet point is always good to mention, especially as you go up to matric, they want to see that in your answer. For 8.2.3, they want us to refer to the strengths of intermolecular forces to explain why the boiling point of HF, hydrogen fluoride, is higher than the boiling point of HCl. Okay, so we're directly comparing these two, and we can definitely see HF as a higher boiling point. Now, they say by referring to strengths of intermolecular forces, so they're already excluding the argument pertaining to molecular mass. They're basically hinting in the question that the intermolecular forces will differ in strength. And the reason why is you guys should remember from a few seconds ago, I said that if we have a hydrogen in a molecule bonding with either a nitrogen, an oxygen or a fluorine, check what we have here, fluorine atom, then between the molecules of these, between the different particles of the substance, so HF, attracted to HF, attracted to HF, these intermolecular forces will be known as hydrogen bonding forces. And I know that that's confusing. So I'm sure that your teacher has discussed this discuss with this with you. <laughs> but the reason why it's confusing is because hydrogen bonding refers to an intermolecular force, which is between a molecule and a molecule. It's not a bond, but it's called hydrogen bonding. However, in order for hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding, the type of intermolecular forces to exist, we do need a hydrogen bonded with a fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, it can be a bit confusing. But basically for this question, the important part is to know that hydrogen fluoride has hydrogen bonding and London forces between its molecules. But HCl only has normal dipole-dipole forces and London forces between its molecules. And you should know that hydrogen bonding is the strongest type of intermolecular force. So think about it, stronger intermolecular force. We're going to need more energy to overcome those forces, therefore higher boiling points. And that's your answer. Okay, there we go. I've typed out the answer for you to make it a little bit easier. Now, in this case, this answer is worth four marks. Now, take note how the first mark goes to telling me about the intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules of HCl. So HCl is dipole-dipole forces and London forces. Hydrogen fluoride is hydrogen bonding and London forces. 
Um, you should notice that I keep saying and London forces. That is important. All molecules, nonpolar and polar, have London forces that act between their molecules. Sometimes they're strict about that when it comes to exams, so you must say both. Then you need to tell me about strength. Hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole forces. Therefore, HF, hydrogen fluoride, will need more energy to overcome its forces, and therefore HF has a higher boiling point. That last statement does not get you a mark because the question makes that statement as well. I just added it in there for the sake of the question being complete. Okay, so notice how you have a common recipe that runs through these questions. You mention the intermolecular forces in both. Always. Then you speak to me about strength. Always. Then you speak to me about energy. And then you make a conclusion. That was just a very, very quick overview of an intermolecular forces and physical property, um, physical properties question. If you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments below and please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I do math, I do science, so I can't wait to help you more in the future. See you in the next one, everyone.